Hey guys, I get a lot of questions about uh, my TIG welding setup and kind of how I go about um, setting the machine up to get the results that I get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of kind of how I set my machine up, uh, how I set the torch up, all that kind of stuff. And then um, I'll kind of show you the settings on the machine, on the flow meter, and we'll just kind of walk through a couple things to get you guys going. Um, this is going to be just how I do things. Um, it's not going to be an actual welding itself video. It's more of machine setup and little things that I do since I get asked about it all the time. So we're going to start. Uh, I use uh, one of the smaller type torches, the, the W9 or the W20. So the first thing we're going to do is I use a gas lens. So I'll zoom in there. So just, just a small gas lens. So it goes in the front of the machine or in the front of the torch. And it's just finger tight. You don't need to use a wrench or anything to get it super tight. So then from there, um, I like to use these little number seven cups. It's just kind of what I found. Um, a lot of people think that there's some magic size cup, some magic size tungsten that will make your weld better than ever. Um, I deal with mainly just steel and aluminum, sometimes stainless and very rarely titanium. So I don't find that much of a difference with um, you know, using red band versus purple band, um, lanthanated, thoriated, or a cup size. So if you're doing more exotic stuff, like a lot of stainless or a lot of titanium or Inconel, that's where the big difference of the cups and the tungsten grade is going to change a lot. So pretty much for me, um, I use red band on everything just because it works. Um, so that your results may vary. You're going to ask 100 people. You're going to get 100 different results. But that's just what I use. So on, back on the torch, the next thing that goes in will be your collet and your gas. So if you're not using a gas lens, um, you'll have a collet body. But the gas lens has a collet body built into it. So your collet will drop in there. And then I've got this like mid-length. It's not a stubby, but it's not a full-length uh, end cap. So it, I'm just going to loosely put it on there so I know where it is. So then I've got my 1 16th red band tungsten. Um, I use 16th on pretty much everything unless I'm dumping a bunch of amperage through it. So on aluminum, a lot of times I'll step that up, uh, especially anything over 16 gauge. So I'm going to do a video on a tungsten grinder later, but I'm just going to sharpen the tungsten real quick, and then we'll put it in there, and then we can go over our machine settings. So if I can get a good shot of that. Uh, that's not the greatest, but um, not a super aggressive and not kind of a blunt point, but just sharpened to a point, all going the same direction. Um, you can do the same thing on a belt grinder or uh, a bench grinder. The thing with me that I'm going to talk a lot more about in the video on the tungsten grinder itself is the fact that it makes me more, of, more efficient in the shop because I can carry this around to wherever I'm welding. I don't have to walk back and forth to the grinder every time I need to sharpen a tungsten. So from there, back on the torch, we can slip our tungsten inside. And then I like to leave uh, about a quarter inch of stick out. And then you don't want to tighten the cup or the cap up too much. Um, if you wrench on it too much, you'll destroy your collet. And then you'll be going through collets all the time. You just need it snugged up so the tungsten doesn't fall out. So from here, I'm going to turn our machine on, and I'll kind of move the camera up close so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'll kind of show you my settings on the machine itself and uh, on the, the bottle on the flow meter. On the machine, I'll just go ahead and flip it on. So right now, I've got it turned all the way down to just 5 amps. So a good rule of thumb to keep in mind is you need 1 amp for every 1 1,000th of material thickness. So if we're going to be welding on 63 thousandths or 16 gauge, we can run that up 
to 63. And this is just kind of a ballpark thing. It usually gets you in the realm. I overshoot that a little bit, so if I'm welding 16 gauge, I'll take it up to 70 amps. That way I can fluctuate the pedal a little bit if I need it. Um, if you hear guys on the internet say they're welding 16 gauge with five to 10 amps, I don't see how that's possible because again, you need about one amp for every one one thousandth of material thickness. So that's a good rule of thumb. If you're welding aluminum, you're gonna have to bump that percentage up just a little bit. So on 16 gauge aluminum, I would set this at about 90 amps. Um, and of course, we'd be running AC instead of DC negative. So that's a basic machine setup to get you going. And then now we'll step over to our bottle. All right, now we're here at our bottle. And um, I like to run about 15 to 20 on the SCFH flow. So you can see it fluctuates a little bit, but it's about 15 to 20. And I've got a little bit of post flow. Um, my machine kind of auto, uh, auto corrects for that. The more amps you're pulling, the longer the post flow is. Um, you just want, you know, five, five to 10 seconds of post flow just to help protect that hot weld from being contaminated by oxygen. All right, so from there, you should be ready to start welding. Um, if you're new to TIG welding, um, it's just gonna take some hood time. Um, there's a lot going on with movement from your foot, both hands, just kind of getting used to everything going. So just put the time in. I mean, you're gonna ruin a bunch of tungsten, you're gonna do bad welds, but the big thing is just get hood time, practice, practice, practice. Uh, I'll probably do more videos on welding itself, um, but I think the key thing is to have a basic understanding of how to set your machine up, and from there, you can build on actually laying down good welds. So thanks for watching, and hopefully this was helpful.